who call the book of life this is a condemnation this is a condemnation we give them christ they are paying for plot of lands in heaven instead of having christ this is a condemnation we give them christ but they prefer to buy a flight ticket to be on the first flight called rapture this is the condemnation that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil if and it shall be given unto you seed time and harvest time shall not cease as long as this earth remains that is his word you understand it that scripture is not for collecting offering but because it has been misinterpreted even when we are teaching the people that are using to collect offering they are angry and they are fighting us how can you be angry that what the scripture is saying is correcting your misconception are you the scripture but you know you can only help people that are willing to reason there are some people they are not willing to reason at all even when you are showing them from the scripture they will say eh, i see it but the other person did it and had a testimony no native doctors have testimony shams produce testimony talisman produces testimony magic produces testimony so testimony is not the validity for truth Truth is truth because it is truth. Part of equipping you is to show you how to defend the message that you are preaching by engaging in superior arguments. It's not a sin to engage in argument. It's not a sin. It's part of preaching. You have to argue sometimes and present superior facts to get a critical thinker to be persuaded belief systems that are established on the misrepresentation of scripture has to be corrected as christians we know that giving is one of the virtues of god and we need to practice it whether we like it or not because god himself gave his son jesus christ as a ransom for us that is the main reason why jesus came on this planet earth, for him to come and pay for our sins so if you're a christian you are not practicing what god even did for us that's giving the lame back i'm going to show you a quick video video from pastor chris he was talking about giving and how you give for you to be blessed let's listen to what he said in this video and then in St. luke's gospel chapter 6 verse 38 again the niv notice what the word tells us here the lord jesus said this he said give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured to you again why is this important because that's the way the kingdom works the system of this world is to hoard hoard it store it up for yourself so others don't get before you but the more they do it the more they're frustrated about their lack the more they're frustrated about their loss even those who are regarded as maybe very wealthy a lot of them go through a lot of challenges a lot of challenges terrible things the world doesn't offer such wonderful life no If they were at peace, they wouldn't want to reduce the population of the world. And they want to do it. They're not at peace. So, again, look at this verse. It says, give and it will be given to you. Something interesting about this verse. Um, in the King James translation. It says something which uh, many of us actually do emphasize, but it's not really in the original. I'll show it to you. Given it, will, it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. Actually, the word men isn't in the original. It's really not there. But uh, 
Why is it there in the King James translation? Well, it's there because the translators figured God will do it through human beings. But I find that that's placing a limitation on God. Maybe we should translate it exactly as it is in the original. Because God's wiser for speaking like that. In the original, it doesn't add men. What you see in several other translations, like the, uh, the NIV I just read to you, is more accurate, doesn't include the word men. So we'll read it again. It says, give and it will be given to you. A good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. Another translation for that same word is bosom. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now that's significant because when you, when you give to God or into the work of God, that's how to give to God. You give to God by giving into his work. Now when you give like that, Whatever that measure represents to you is how God measures back your return. That's what he just said to you. What does your giving represent to you? What's the greatness, what's the value of what you gave to you? To you. Now, that's not the same thing as according to what you have. It's not just according to what you have. What do you have, really? It begins with your mind. It starts with your mind. For example, if I say to you, Look around you and tell me what you see. Every one of you will come up with something different. Because of how we see. There are things you would see, you're not going to mention them, because you don't think they matter. Your perception. So if I say to you, what do you have? I wonder what you're going to say. For example, when God said to Moses, what do you have in your hand? He could have passed the rod from one hand to the other and said, I don't have anything. He was holding a rod. He, he, he could have thought, I don't have anything, pass it to the other one and say, I, I don't have anything in my hand. But he was smart. He said, a rod. He's trying to tell God, this is nothing. It's a rod I have. God said, all right, put it on the ground. He put it on the ground, it turned to a serpent. The Bible says Moses fled from it. And God said, take it up by the tail, turn back to a rod. And God said, with this rod, you perform miracles. Amazing. Imagine that you're holding this stick. I said, what do you have in your hand? And we're talking big things. You, you're not going to think, the stick is anything. So when you say according to what you have, what do you have? You think he's talking about the notes, the currency you have? Is he talking about your shoes? Is he talking about your car? Is he talking about your... What, what do you have? Suddenly you realize that you're thinking about what you have really depends so much on you. What do you think is of value? When you give to God, what does it represent to you? So imagine that you have a lot of other things, but you don't have cash. And so you say, well, the little cash I got here is what I want to give to God. So say, this is because this is what I have. How true is that? Is that, what, is that all you have? Really?
What about your earrings? Oh, I forgot that. Oh, what about what about your watch? Oh, I forgot that. Uh, what about your car? Oh, I forgot that. Uh, what about your house? Oh, I forgot that. Oh, what about your necklace? Oh, I forgot that. You see, you may be surprised. So, when you give to God, what is the value of that thing to you? That's what matters. So he says, and it will be given to you good measure. And I like this. It says, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. You say, well, I've never seen that kind of miracle that I've been given. Well, you've been given. Maybe you should look at the last part of the verse. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you again. So maybe you haven't given it in such a way that was a great measure. And so you've been receiving in a way that's not significant. Those who give into the work of God significantly also get significant results. I know you finished watching the video and he has said a lot of things in which it makes sense. And what he said in which it captivated me was if you give to God, you've given it to his work. We have to understand this concept. What Pastor Chris is trying to let us understand that immediately you give in church, you are giving to the work of God. That's very important. By giving that money in church, you know the pastor that you are giving your money to. You have to know the pastor. You have to know the reason why you are giving in church. Don't just give in church. Because a lot of pastors are even preaching things they don't even understand in church. All they know is just to tell you that give, it shall be given unto you. That's what we have to understand. You have to also know that when the pastor is preaching, he's preaching about Christ. Any church that you go and they are not talking about Christ, they are talking about certain things that is not very relevant in the church. A lot of pastors out there, what they do is they preach or they talk about motivational messages. We are not there to listen to motivational messages. We are not there to listen to web messages. We are there to listen to the message of Christ, that is the gospel. We have a lot of books in this Bible, about 66 books in the Bible. The pastor has to read and understand so that he can tell us certain things in the Bible that is going to benefit our salvation. Not just preaching about giving and also bringing or putting fear into the congregation because he know that if you don't give, you are going to be punished. I'm going to show you another quick video from Dr. Ebo Damna. He shared this message about giving and was tackling a lot of issues when it comes to giving. Let's listen to what he said. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you made, withal it shall be measured to you again. That's the scripture people use for give so that God can give you. If you don't give, God will never give you. So if you don't give offering, don't expect a breakthrough. The level of your sacrifice will determine the weight of your breakthrough. Your offering will wipe away your suffering. <laughs> your offering will remove your suffering. And yet many people are giving offering and still suffering. So who is lying? God or the preacher? The preacher of course. How can offering remove suffering? Where did you ever see that in the Bible? Eh? Your what? If you're sick, check your seed. There's a lot of prosperity preacher here. <laughs> so if you're not giving seed, you will be sick. Listen, it's not just evil, it's very wrong. It's a corruption of God's character. From the pulpit, oh. from the pulpit. And people who are lazy to study their Bible just keep running around with it because it makes little sense. It makes some sense to a natural man. But you're not asking the right questions. If it is true that your offering will wipe away your suffering, why is it that many people in the church that give offering are suffering? 
somebody is lying and definitely cannot be God it has to be the preacher who is preaching it now did you observe he says shall men not shall God give and it shall be given good measure pressed down shaking together running over shall men not God now observe I think I went somewhere to preach I think it was Ghana also and one preacher came and then <laughs> that day <laughs> I left the service immediately because I felt like he was molesting and spiritually abusing people. I mean, he told them that there are four levels of prosperity in God. The first level is good measure. Second level, press down. Third level, shaking together. Fourth level, running over. That to step into these four levels, it begins with giving. Then he started talking and calculating for them how much they have to give to enter level one how much they have to give to enter level two level three level four and he was molesting the bible abusing twisting in fact he even said something i have never heard since i was born that was the first i was sitting on the pulpit because the host pastor begged me that please there's another preacher preaching who is like his spiritual father and he will want me to just sit down with him so we can give his spiritual father respect i'm a guest and as a guest i am there to serve the church so i came that evening i just flew in that evening i was even tired from the flight you know ghana flight evening flight so i just said okay pick me up when he starts preaching just before he starts bring me they brought me as sudden i was listening to the man then the man started talking like that oh my god then he now said to them even lions pay tight lions had sense to pay tight and many Christians don't have sense to pay tight. Immediately, my mind started flying. I've been reading the Bible. I have never seen where lions pay tight. Where is this man bringing this rema from? Oh my goodness. Today I'm going to be enjoying revelation now. Then guess what the man said? He said, lions pay tight. Because when Daniel was thrown to the lions then, the lions looked at Daniel and they said among themselves, let us give this one as tight. Immediately he said that I took my Bible. I told the guy, excuse me, I have to go now. I have to go now because I don't want my ears corrupted. When a pastor is greedy, every scripture is for money collection. It's greed. Now, he says, give and it shall be given good measure, shaking together, running over, shall men, take note of men. Listening to what he said, he has tackled a lot of issues, he has said so many things about giving, in which it makes sense to me. He talk about the friction, whatever you throw to the top, it comes down. Those are the principles that is being governed on this planet. Earth. But what he said, in which it captivated me and which it made me, for me to share my opinion on what he said was, he was trying to let us understand that. A lot of people in church give offering and they are suffering. Yes, that's what he meant. He said a lot of people are giving in church, but they are suffering. We have to understand that giving in church is a different thing altogether. In which Pastor Chris made up understood that giving in church, he are giving it to his work. But Dr. Ibadamna is trying to let us understand that a lot of people out there are giving, but they are still suffering. That was the context in which he was trying to let us understand that. If you are giving and you are still suffering, it's not like giving in church will just end up your suffering. Giving in church does not end suffering. You need to work. You need to go out there to find a job to do so that you can end your suffering. It can be so many things maybe you are suffering from maybe your sickness. If it's sickness, you need to visit the doctor for the doctor to scan you and for the doctor to know the kind of diseases or sickness that is worrying you. For you to be giving medicine, for you to feel well. And also if it's about money tree issue, all you need to do is just to work, find something to do. We are all on this planet Earth to save. Any person who really wants to make money, all you have to do is just to save humanity. The people out there are saving. A lot of people are saving. Someone who is selling maybe food outside there is saving. It's all about service. So if you don't save, you won't get anything. So don't put it in your mind that you are giving in church to end your suffering. That's what Dr. Ibadamna was trying to let us understand what he really meant. Pastor Chris came back and gave another explanation. Somebody said God told him to give an offering, a special seed. After giving it, he went back to say, Hey, that's no, I should have.
You know what the Bible says? Remember Lord's wife. <laughs> what even came over me? I just went. <laughs> they didn't call. They didn't call me. They didn't call me. By myself. I just carried it. I went to put it there. How can you give something to God? And wish you could get it back. <laughs> Sometimes a spouse, maybe a wife, would give a special seed. And the husband would say, Did you tell me? <laughs> Practice the word of God. Practice it. It's like when I teach about money, I tell people you can practice playing what I call the money game. You see it? It's a simple thing. Learn it. Listen, God's word is for us to do. It's for practice. You do it. Of context, and I know you are too intelligent to act in that manner. 638, the preachers have used for a lot of collection of monies in different meetings, all kinds of gimmicks here and there. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you made without, it shall be measured to you again. People use that scripture for raising of money. But that scripture does not reflect the character of God. This scripture does not reflect God's character. If God has to wait for you to give before he gives you, you'll be dead. Because you wouldn't have got him if God never gave. You came naked. So how did you get what you got? Naked you came to this world. So how did you get what you got? You got what you got because what you got was already on ground waiting for your arrival. So God already provided before you came here. It is because he gave that's why you got to give. So it's not give to God so God will give to you. That's fraud. It's not put a seed in the hand of God, then God will multiply it. There's no soil in the hand of God. God's hand is not soil. So you don't put seed in God's hand for God to multiply. No. And somebody said, don't you believe in miracles? I believe in miracles, but miracles are not a principle for living. You don't use miracles as a lifestyle. There are principles that govern lifestyle. He that does not walk, so if you're walking, you don't need to pray for food. So that side of prayer has been reduced from your prayer walk. In that area, you are in rest. And that is God's will for you to be in. But if you, have, if you ignore that principle, and you now want miracles, hunger will deal with you, and maybe before the miracle will happen, you will be dead. There are principles that govern this, this world. What goes up, what is that? It's a principle. It's a law of gravity. Because men are not supposed to be floating. Men are supposed to be walking because men are mortal. If you start floating, that's extraordinary. That's not natural. That's not natural. So there are principles for living. And that is why in the epistles, Brother Paul took time to deal with principles. Honor your father and mother, for this is right. Okay? This is right. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit your husbands, so there can be order in the society. Pay tax to government, so that the government can function well. All those instructions are there. Those are principles for living. You don't live by miracles. Miracles are supposed to happen once in a while, when principles fail then God intervenes. I'm teaching here. So if a preacher says, give me money, God will multiply it. He's looking for how to steal from you. He's robbing you of what Christ has done for you. God does not give because you give. God gave, that's why you give. So what will this scripture be? This scripture was not talking about giving money. Even though preachers have used it for money. The scripture there, if you read the pretext, you'll find I wasn't talking of money. Pretext and posters. Go back to 36. Be therefore merciful, 
as your father also, that is copy your father. Your father is merciful. Based on what you see in your father, what do you do? Be merciful. All right? Next verse. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given. Give what? Forgiveness. Give what? Mercy. And it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men whom you gave mercy to give back to your bosom. So that's not a scripture for offering. That's a scripture for human relationships. But when a preacher does not study well, he now handpicks that scripture and he forces the Bible to say what the Bible is not saying for his own personal gain. So God is not waiting for you to give. He gave. God is kind to the unthankful. God is not waiting for you to give before he gives. He's kind even to people that are not thankful. Even people that don't remember God. It's like when you hear preachers say, if you are not thankful, your tank will not be full. Which kind of tank? Those are just, those are just rhymes to blow your mind and, 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 and make you mesmerize you. What tank is going to be full? From where? Are you a petrol tanker or what tank? Say, so if, you, if you give thanks, God will do more. Ah, what kind of God is that? Is he a robot that you have to thank him before he does more? Why do we thank him? We thank him because it's in our attitude to be grateful. That's all. It's not so that he can do anything. Even if you don't thank him, he has done what he wants to do. Even if you don't thank him, he has done what he wants to do. There are people who say there is no God. He protects them when they fly. Their plane didn't crash. They said there is no God. Their body, they get healed in the hospital. And they come back saying there is no God. But the God healed. And God didn't change his mind. He said, okay, since you say there's no God, die. No, he's kind to the unthankful. That's the God I serve. Aren't you glad that's your father? So Jesus is redefining the character of God. He's putting God's character in, in perspective. He is correcting the notion that some of the Old Testament people gave concerning God. In John chapter 6, he did it over and over again. And this John chapter 6 is a major reference. Don't play with it. You know why? Because in John chapter 6, he has just finished multiplying bread and fish. He has just finished multiplying bread and fish. Okay? Anybody with bread here, people are hungry, they brought, he prayed and a miracle. That was a miracle. That was not a principle for living. That was an intervention in a situation. It was a miracle and it happened only once. Bread and fish only happen once. So all was Dr. Ibadam now was trying to let us understand that if you give, you are just giving for giving because you have it and you are giving. But don't be thinking that if you give, you receive. Those things never work. Those are the lies that you've told us that if you give, you receive. If you give and you are there, you will be there. You will never receive anything unless you use your senses unless you use your hands to work before you can get anything that you want that's very true i know you've learned so many things in this video and what you have to do is just to take very good care of yourself and i'll see you another time